Over the last couple of weeks and even a couple of months, there's been consternation over the state of Rax or Barracks play, one of the three invisible factions inside of the war game. Now, of course, before we begin this discussion, you have to subdivide into the idea that there are factions to be played. This isn't a game like Rise of Nations or Age of Empires or StarCraft, where you pick your race at the beginning and you don't have access to other tech trees. And so when we talk about racks, we're talking about players that primarily use the barracks as their building. And that's the goal, is how do we figure out what racks players can do? But before we figure out what racks players can do, we have to understand what the source of the complaints are. The complaints tend to be as follows. Well, I can't move out on the map. If I move out on the map, then all of my units either win the game, which is extremely unlikely due to their speed of reinforcements, particularly against Beast, or uh, they all die and then I've lost all of my map agency and I therefore lose the game. This is particularly common in Rax vs. Beast, where players say, well, I keep being harassed when the Fender push across the map with the threat of winning the game. They have a giant pile of workers and eight vents to reinforce, and therefore there's nothing that I can do, or so I feel. When players play against mech as Rax, they feel, I don't understand there's so much pressure put on my archer because I have to make some of these before I can have Ballista to counter the gyrocrafts, but then also they have catapults and I have to have airships to drop and to interact with them on that front, so I need an advanced workshop, but I can't really push out because if I push out, I'll get repair, I'll get stopped up by repair and mass worker repair and how powerful that is in version 4.3.2. But, so all ins don't work either unless I get lucky and I blink raiders on top of my op opponent, but my opponents are getting better and better at not allowing that to happen so that they don't lose the game instantly. Um, or maybe I can try and take an extra base, but if I take an extra base and then I'm against mech and they do a two base pull with half of their worker line, then I just lose the game because I can't possibly hold because they don't have enough units or DPS. It just feels like Rax is hemmed in from all sides. In late game, Rax vs. Beast currently exists as you need to be able to split your army into two spots and then have map presence, game awareness, and decision making to make sure that you don't get trapped by the far faster Beast units. Beast also seems like they can reinforce from nearly any point to push across the map is very dangerous, and you need a very, very refined mix of tech in order to make anything happen. It's gotten to the point that some Rax players are saying, you just need mages, and then, then you can start playing the game, you can start moving out so that you can pull back, you can start having some interaction on your opponent's side of the map. When we get to mech, people think you've got to either make a giant pile of raiders and soldiers and then drop one, you know, teleport flash one and then drop the other, or you have to take the entire map and then hope that you can win the ensuing engagements, which are very unlikely to happen. And there's always the threat of being all in. And so this is the landscape in which people feel like Rax is kind of hemmed in. We can't do anything. There's nothing that we can do. And so I'm here to shatter all of your illusions as to the fact that you can't do anything because we haven't reached the pinnacle of the state of play inside of Little Morgan. The, the level of play is actually very low compared to what is even possible even on a baseline level inside of the game. And I think that a lot of Rax players have sour grapes over the fact that they don't have certain advantages when they fail to understand the way the game is. So the first and most important part of theory crafting is something you have to take on board. If you've never theory crafted before, this is something you must take on board, you must understand, otherwise the rest of this video is useless to you. Go somewhere else and do something else instead. Um, because this video won't get through to you, maybe come back to it when you have a more open mind to these ideas. The fundamental idea of theory crafting is as follows. There is a problem. How do I sidestep the problem or engage in a solution to the problem? Not can it be done. Theory crafting fundamentally assumes that it can be done. It is a creative exercise. If you lack the creative component, then I don't know what to tell you. But I will tell you this. Right now, Little Wargame exists in a state of flux because of the number of players that it has active at any one time and the relative disparity in skill between all of the bottom, mid-tier, and top-level players. That is to say, there is not a decade of gameplay experience and replays that you can fall back on. The meta hasn't been stagnant for so long that you can reach back into time, figure out what people used to do, and then try that and pull back from the past in that way. If you're looking for build orders that already exist, that already tell you what to do, and all you have to do is ABC follow them, you'll get into a good game state, that is not where the world of theory crafting operates. The world of theory crafting operates off the rails. If you want to do that, go do that. Go play on the rails, try and har like harness your mechanics, take the builds that already exist, see what you can do, operate within those constraints. But if you find that you are not working successfully inside of those constraints, then you have to shatter the constraints, and that means you have to shatter some of your presuppositions about what the buildings are, about the tech paths that people go down, about the way that they incorporate their movement, their armies, and their decision making. And that's why it's called theory crafting the Rax Revival, not follow this build order Rax Revival.
So here's some things about the racks revival that currently you can you know you can take into account as racks. What are the advantages that other races have? Well, obviously Beast has all the speed and they can reinforce more quickly. Their units might be even more cost efficient when you take a look at the fact that they have so many like two wolves give the same comparable hit points to you no know, each one has the comparable hit points of an archer, but one soldier at 85 gold is almost twice as much. But at the same time, it doesn't have twice as many hit points, and the armor is actually like kind of wonky instead. And the, the mobility, even if they win or lose in a straight-up fight, the mobility of these units is very fast. So Beast has mobility, and Beast also has a very, very uh, techable endgame. They can go to Werewolf Dragon and then tech in some mages if they decide to. So they have a very strong endgame composition. They're naturally leaning towards. What is the strength of Mech? Mech is very difficult to kill early barring Raider Flash in to kill, like, the very susceptible weak units. And they do have Gyrocrafts, which put pressure on you to play with other units in the Rack's wheelhouse and kind of naturally put you on the defensive when you would like to be expanding. So, let's go the other way. What are the weaknesses? Uh, what weaknesses right now are people trying to exploit with that? Well, none. They're just saying, Rax is a slow race, so against Beast, all I can do is defend. And then Rax is slightly at dis is disadvantaged in army, so I have to get better tech, but if my opponent has better composition in mech army, then I don't know what to do. I don't know what the move outs are. So let's go the other way. What does Rax normally do well against both of those? So we're going to start from a very ground-based level. We're going to take this high-level theory, and then we're going to break it down. So let's see what advantages Rax has that these other factions do not. Start with the Worker. It's still version 4.3.2. Workers still get upgrades. There's been talk of workers not receiving any upgrades, but right now, something Rax players don't take into account, overwhelmingly don't use, and I haven't seen outside of some people like Dragon Archer Z ever use, is the fact that your workers get upgrades. Your workers get upgrades. That means they become mini tanky soldiers, mini tanky fighters. That's something that you can use. If you get plus attack upgrades, you can pull workers, and all of a sudden, they're doing damage that's equivalent to an unupgraded soldier. That becomes relevant, or unupgraded archer, but at melee range, that becomes extremely, extremely relevant very, very quickly, especially if your workers are more powerful than theirs. Then pull, counter pull doesn't work. So if your army needs body blocking, why don't you take advantage of the fact that your workers get upgrades? But we'll, we'll get into solutions a little bit later. Talk, speaking of upgrades, Rax units have fairly high, compared to Beast, they have fairly high single target damage. So why are you getting attack upgrades against Beast? Think about it this way. So Beast units, they naturally have very low damage compared to Rax units, and they attack as quickly or more quickly. The soldier attacks at the same speed as a um, wolf, but wolves are faster and uh, in movement speed, and wolves attack at 10 damage per 1.15 seconds, whereas the soldier attacks at 18. Compare the hit point difference between the both of them, and you can see that what's the be what's better here? To go from 18 damage to 19 damage on the soldier? Okay. Or to take the wolf from dealing 9 damage because the soldier has one base armor to make the, sol the wolf deal 8 damage instead. You have 250 hit points on a soldier. 8 damage apiece means that there's over 33 hits that are required, 33, 32, 33 hits that are required, 34, I believe, uh, for a single wolf to kill the soldier. But at base, right now, at 9, it only takes about 30. A little less than 30, in fact. So people aren't even considering that, okay, against Beast, armor upgrades are far more effective. All right, let's take upgrades into account for mech. People assume, well, I want to get as many plus attack upgrades as I can, possibly against mech. That's what I want. That's what I'm going for. And the question I have to ask here is, why? No, like, seriously, like, consider that for a second. Why? Okay, so look, let's look at this. The catapult deals 58 damage, and archers have 160 health. That means that if you get plus attack damage, you're going to do slightly more against the mech army, but your archer is going to die in three hits, and then once they have plus five, it's going to die in two hits, which is going to be a drastic reduction in your ability to go ahead and do anything. Why don't you get armor upgrades so that your units are tankier? Well, you can't do the raw damage to go through the DPS of heal. I understand that. But at the same time, think about Gatling guns. Gatling guns would love to chase down soldiers, but soldiers become much more effective if they could just walk up and brawl more easily. Think about this. If you have more armor upgrades in general, you're far better against workers. Just think about it this way, right? Armor activates every time a unit hits you. Attack activates every time you hit the unit. So if your soldier is over there, it's attacking every 1.15 seconds, and a worker is, and you walk into three of them into a worker line, and there are 
let's say 10 workers in that worker line, and all the workers turn and fight, what's going to be more beneficial? For the soldier to have 21 damage instead of 18, so that it kills these things, and, okay, it kills them in 6 hits now instead of 7. Or, so that means that the three of them, if they all focus a single worker, that worker dies. But that's not how it works. You know that's not how it works. That's rarely what happens when you get surrounded by the workers in that way. What really happens is that you have the surface area of something like eight of these workers hitting on three of these soldiers, and they just go, blah, 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 blah. Okay, well, every single hit there is damage that would be mitigated on the part of the, uh, that would be mitigated. The damage of the worker would be mitigated, and the soldier would be thus tankier than it would be normally if it had that extra armor, even if you're going up against a mech army. Okay, let's think about it this way again. We've gotten off the topic of workers and upgrades. What about the buildings? So what's great about the Rax building is that you could just make Rax buildings. Like, Rax buildings have soldier, archer, raider, and they have mage inside of them. This is like a... a, a you can hide what you're doing beautifully. You can almost tech switch, if you will, not just between Soldier Archer, but also between Raiders. And, of course, you can incorporate mages inside of them. You don't have to spend extra money for extra tech in order to, un uh, to unlock anything except the mage, and even then, you only need to research Fireball. It comes with Slow Field, the thing that people are praising about Rax. And all of those units get Rax upgrades, so they're st almost strictly better than archers. Do they have the attack speed? No. Do they do the same damage? Yes. And do they have spells? Yes. Are they a little more expensive? as well. But if you're talking about things that are frail naturally, the fact that there's not much difference between spellcasters and archers, and you can make a spellcaster in the barracks, is an advantage that Rax has. Do you know where Beast has to go to get spellcasters? They have to go to a different race in, fa in faction entirely. They have to build a barracks and then build a mages guild so they can have access to those. They don't have natural synergies with priests because healing ward is for good stationary units, and they don't naturally they move around too much to be beneficial in that regard. They can take advantage of invisibility, but they have to reach up the tech tree for invisibility to be something that's worth getting for them. They have to they have to hybridize just to make adva take advantage of any spellcasters. What spellcasters does Mech have? Do they have any? No, I'm not aware that they do. Unless you count the airship as the fact that it's microintensive as a spellcaster, or you cast the effect of couch of. Uh, Cast against the land on Caltrops as being a spellcaster, but it's not. It's an ability. They're not actually a unit that uses mana for the purpose of having spells that create an outsized effect. These are all things that Rax does have natively. One of them is built inside of the barracks itself, and the spellcasters actually receive upgrades. Let's go into other advantages that Rax has. Rax is a very, very defensively capable race. Look at archers. There's a reason Archer v. Archer is very common inside of Rax vs. Rax. It's not overwhelming, but it is very common because you have this unit, the Archer, that has phenomenal range. It actually has wonderful range. It's better than Gatling guns. It's better than snakes. It can chase away airships from incredible distances. It actually can fire back on dragons. Like The only thing that's outranging an Archer is a catapult. That's fantastic. Add in that they can get bonus range. Think what advantages that confers. You're getting bonus, bonus range on your archers. That's not an advantage. You can't get snakes to have bonus range. You can't get your Gatling gun to have extra range. They can get extra speed, sure. But mobility isn't the thing that Rax is emphasizing here. It's emphasizing sturdiness and, and kicking things away. Okay, what other advantages does Rax have? Well, you might say, well, that's about it. How could you forget the Raider? How could you forget the Raider? This early game unit that goes in, stabs things. This unit that four shots wolves, but after three shots leaves them so critically low, the beast player has to consider not even using them, otherwise they'll lose the unit. How about the fact that two shots snakes, it three shots workers, it's very easy to take a trio of them and get something done very, very easily. Like, this is a phenomenal harass unit. The wolf... Two then actually suffers dramatically as a result of the game instituting raiders. The defensive utility that raiders provide is astounding. I know a lot of people think, oh, it's a map control unit. It goes out and it stops the other player from just one den, one wolf, and making a third base. It stops the mech player from, from being greedy and doing whatever they want. What, what are you talking about? This a defensively minded unit. Shroud is a defensively minded ability. It stops units from attacking outside of that range, excluding, of course, mech units. Stops snakes from attacking. Stops archers from attacking. Like, 
it limits the effect of those units that normally are required to get some distance and surround. Like, it also is a map control unit. It goes and stops other players from doing what they want to. You're not thinking that the offensive utility of the Raider is actually causing, a, has a defensive component that it's, you're thinking it's going to go and kill units. You ever ask a beast player, play the other side of that matchup. You be the beast player with three wolves on your castle first two den, looking at three Raiders on the other side, hoping against hope that the Raider player just flashes into your worker line with no remaining teleports. You can kill everything because it's terrifying. Those Raiders have region just like beast units. It's uncharacteristic for Rex that they have region. They make phenomenal surrounding units, harass units. They can easily scout out third bases. The map control that they provide can be taken away, but that's just it. It has to be taken away. It's so phenomenal, and the micro-ability of the Raider is phenomenal. You couldn't have asked for a more micro-intensive unit. The fact that it has this staggered attack that you can then like teleport back from and then go for again, you've got the same pullback micro that is intended and is inherent to all wolves, except it's in a unit that does 51 damage, and it can teleport to safety if it wants to. And it has comparable movement speed to the wolf. Oh, but, and a barracks makes it as well. Look at all these upgrades, like, look at all these, these advantages that Rax players have. But, <coughs> there's a final one I want to get into, which is as follows. Your, your forge that gets Rax unit upgrades also gets back upgrades. Beast players would absolutely love to do that. You know what beast players have to do if they want to have catapult drops or if they want to hybridize in that fashion? They've got to go build an animal testing lab so that their wolf snake dragon werewolf doesn't get left out to the pasture. And then they have to go and they have to go build a forge so they can get these upgrades. Meanwhile, the rack students have all access to all these upgrades anyways. It shouldn't even be that way in my estimation. It's a massive advantage though. It's a very realistic, powerful advantage even. Because mech upgrades and racks upgrades don't count for each other. So you can get plus one racks and plus one uh, mech attack and plus one racks attack, and it doesn't count for each other despite being in the exact same building. So what, what do you do with these advantages? What do they mean? Well, the first thing is I think racks players are trying to attack other races and other factions in their areas of strength, and they're not seeing what their own advantages are. Rax players think, it's kind of like, um, if you've ever read or watched Bleach, the manga, or the, the anime, terrible anime, don't watch all of it, right? But there are some lines that the writers put in there, uh, that Taite Kubo puts in there, that are actually quite intelligent, that are quite relevant. And so one of them is, Kisuke Urahara is this mentor figure, and he's training the protagonist, Ichigo Kurosaki. And he says, no, that's not good, that's not good at all. I can sense that what you are doing is in fear. You don't attack because you will protect someone. You attack because you, when you attack, you're afraid to kill the other person. When you're defending, you're afraid of dying. When you are trying to stop someone from dying, you are afraid that you will fail. Don't be afraid. Like, in, in this context, they're using blades because, of course, it's anime. He says, notice my blade is practically screaming with the desire to murder and to cut and to fight you right now. And so that's that's the thing that Kisuke Urahara is trying to build inside of Ichigo is, I, I'll take it to right now to a little war game. When people build raiders as racks, they're afraid, they think they're afraid to lose the raider. They're afraid of what build they're going to find on the opposite side of the map. They're afraid that their opponent is going to be doing something unorthodox. They're not scouting with the intent of attacking. They're not attacking to get map control back. They're afraid of what's going to happen when they get to the other side. When Rax players build up a second barracks inside of their natural before taking their third, they're not doing that because they're going to attack. They're afraid that they're going to be attacked. When Rax players make mages so that they can move out, it's not so they're it's not so that they can move out. It's because they're afraid of being surrounded. And that fear is actually infested all Rax play. To an extent that people now say, oh, don't play Rax, play, play Beast instead. Like, why would you ever play Rax? Beast has better matchups. Think about the advantages that Rax plays, and now let's piece them together, shall we? First of all, you have Raiders. Barring, I think, one or two players, everyone's Raider Micro is lacking. You don't use the Raider the way that it should be, if you're Rax. You send the Raider out. And where are the aggressive teleports to try and kill wolves? No, you see a wolf coming towards you and you immediately run back away. You're, you're afraid to make two raiders send them across the map and put your micro to the test. 
You're afraid to be a little bit behind economically on a castle against a castle first too then, because that means that the pressure is now on you to teleport, to go, to murder, to kill, to fight. You're afraid that you're going to lose your map control, so you make these units as safety units. You know what a person who's attacking with raiders does? They love building a raider and sending it across the map. They, you know what they do when the first raiders come and they meet in the middle like this? They don't want to take the fight. They say, I'm going to teleport over away from this raider, and we're going to see who blinks first. We're going to go attack your worker that's building our castle. If it's castle first to them, we're going to go start chipping away at these workers, because that is a threat that you have to answer. You have to micro, you have to respond, and I have the tools to manage it through regen and teleportation. You know what happens when the beast player starts making snakes and starts going to defend? They're... Why aren't you teleporting to kill that first snake? Let's say you don't want to do it. Situation isn't feeble because someone is defending really well. You know what you could do? Those raiders are a map control unit. Why don't you find out where the third bases are? Why don't you constantly send them out like this to check on Ravage, this base over here, this base over here, then come back in the middle and constantly keep the army honest? You're afraid that the beast player is going to tech when you have the tools as raiders to go kill them if they decide to do it prematurely. You have the tools to go stop their workers from going out and getting a ninja third base. You have all the map control you could ever ask for. But what happens as soon as most Rax players see that there's enough wolf snake to kick them back? Oh, they're just going to retreat all the way to their side of the map? That's all they're going to do. Or they're going to take oblique angles and check every minute and a half to see if a third base has been taken over. Give me a break. Why are you acting afraid when you have a unit that the beast player would die to have? They hope that you run away. Let's get into the next area of this. A lot of Rax players, they're building a second Rax before they take their third base against Beast or against Mech. Why? What are you afraid of? Let's think of the advantages. Your workers get upgrades. You have archers with incredible range. You have raiders that could potentially have shroud and teleport shenanigans. Like, you have extra range on these archers as well, if that's possible. You could even bring out a catapult. Like, your defensive utility is astounding. Why are you afraid that the other player is going to come kill you? If it's a Rax versus Beast, you have all of these raiders sitting over there. Why do you need a second Rax? Why can't you just go grab a third? Because here's the thinking that has infested people's minds. They have started from a presupposition that they've never challenged before, which is, oh, I've got to get the second Rax. Okay, why do you have to get the second Rax? Because I need enough units to be safe. Okay, safe against what? Well, I don't really know. And that's exactly what the problem is. I don't really know. Are you afraid that they're going to go build, the beast player is going to build six den with wolf snake and come burst down your door? You had these units, here's the thing. Here's the reality no one wants to talk about. That build of two racks, build units, go secure the third, was made in the era before the raider existed, before the snake existed. You had to do that. Because if you didn't do that, you would lose the game immediately if someone decided to do four or five dens on two bases and go kill you because you couldn't send a unit to go scout. You couldn't send soldiers to go see what was going on because they would get picked off and they would be destroyed. You had no easy way of determining what the location or the intent of the third base was. You had no teleporting fast regenerating unit that could run away from damn near everything and skip over walls like some abusable Sonic the Hedgehog looking Sega Genesis era wall hack. You didn't have that. And so people would build two racks because they would die if they went one racks expand. One racks natural expand. They would die. But now, why are you building the second racks now? To assure your safety, you have raiders on the other side of the map. Do you know what you could be doing? Like, think about it. By the time you build that second barracks against Beast, and you have it's constructed, that's 125, 150. That's 125 gold. And then let's say it makes like, mm, you're at about 30, 40 supply right now. 30 of 40 supply. And let's say you've started to, you want to expand around 40 and 50. You're going to make two archers, two soldiers, a raider and an archer. What are we talking about here? So you just build a 125 gold structure so you can build two 85 gold units. That's 170, that's 295. Guess what's 350? That castle. 
you could have that castle. In an era where people are going castle first to then, because they're not afraid of the passive raiders that people are bringing up in Rack's play, because they're afraid to go kill the beast player. They're afraid to actually take a risk and risk losing the raiders and playing a tight game. No, they want to be safe instead. Instead of doing that, stop. Don't spend that money. Save the money. Go expand. Grab your third base. Because the units you're producing at home, eventually you're going to decide not to make any more raiders. Eventually you're going to decide you want to switch to archers and soldiers. Send those units to go scout. Send a raider to go scout the potential third base location. Clear out a wolf. Kill the information. By the way, every wolf and snake that they spend isn't at the front defending against all of your raiders. Why aren't you getting the third base first? Why do you need the extra barracks? Take the same thing to racks versus mech. Why are you building two racks? I don't understand. By your own logic, it shouldn't be useful. Because... If they, oh, well, I have to build it because if I go one racks into third, they'll kill me. They probably will. What happens if you go two racks into third? Aren't you still afraid that they will kill you? Did you forget about the fact that they have, like, repair workers that repair and can go over and Gatling gun and cheese? Yes, but here's the thing. You're racks. You're the defensive race. Think about the implications of being the defensive race race. That's what we're talking about here. You have fought to secure the map control with raiders. You know what's coming when it's coming. You know what the third base indication is when it is. Let's say you're afraid that they're going to, well, they're, they could do a two base all in. Oh, so we're going to forget about the fact that archers have more range than gatling guns and that instead of firing on all of the gatling guns, you could actually, and the gyrocraft, you might actually want to use those archers to ping down the workers, you know, the things that are actually causing the build to be very, very strong in the first place. Hit the units that don't regenerate. Your targeting is all kinds of wrong. What if you're afraid of, well, I don't understand. Like, what What if they, uh, what if they go, like, one base, you know, what if they go, I, I, what if it's something I can't deal with, right? What if they go one base, uh, one racks, uh, one workshop expand, and then they get a mill, and they send uh, gyrocraft over to go archers. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm only on one base. What can I do about that? Why are you making five raiders against, uh, why are you making five raiders? Off of your one racks. Do you really think you're going to kill Rhinus if you do that? You could. It's possible. You could catch them lacking. But is that the percentile play? Is that the smart play? Especially when there's now three or four Gatling guns there being produced off of the one workshop. And the mill is coming over. What do the extra raiders actually do for you? Those Gatling guns are... There's a reason they're sitting in the base. Cuddling a corner. Hiding next to the workers. They're terrified of raiders in the open field. They're terrified that four raiders are going to get the jump on them and one shot the Gatling gun before any of like repair nanigans can go on and then teleport away. Why are you making so many of these stupid raiders against mech? Well, it doesn't solve the problem because the gyrocraft just comes over and it starts killing me. I've only got one rex. You only have one rex. What are you talking about? If you got the third base first, then you could build towers or additional rex and kick the. Build additional racks, use the one racks that you're producing, because the mech player can't make an infinite number of gyrocrafts immediately. I know it feels like they just make a bunch of units and then they repair them, but you have your own map control. That is a play, a ploy, for them to try and grab a third base. Don't you understand? When they attack you, that you have more range with these archers. They can repair, but only if they can get the unit to be repaired. They don't want to stand and fight. That's a tech investment. Those gyrocrafts are being spent to try and pull you away, to pull your army back so they have the map control. They're afraid of your raiders. They want to kick your raiders back. And so if they send the gyrocraft to go kill the raiders that are at the front, teleport them away, run away, and then guess what? You're in a great spot now because you have three bases and they're trying to secure the third. And you have now, you can build the extra racks. You can build that second racks and start making archers and going from there. And you'll know exactly what to build. In fact, you don't even probably need the racks. You might want to go into an advanced workshop. You can cut the racks and the two units it would have made entirely just by being, like, not being afraid. Instead of being afraid of what the mech player is going to do, seize the initiative of the game. Go grab that third base and see what's going on. Let's talk about the workers again, shall we, in the context of Rax versus Beast. First off, all the upgrades that you're getting as Rax, most people aren't getting the right upgrades. They still want to get plus attack upgrades, as if it was 2017 or 2018 or 2019 and we didn't have snakes in the game. Let me explain something about snakes to you. Okay, soldiers and wolves attack at the same speed. Snakes attack more than twice as quickly as archers. More than twice. 
more than twice. And so if you get plus one attack, your soldier and archer do one more damage for every hit that they would have landed. On the same timetable, the wolf does one more damage than would have done. The snake does two more damage than it should have done. Why are you not getting armor? Your armor, first off, look at the name strength of the soldier. It already has armor. It already mitigates damage. Why wouldn't you want your tanky mitigate damage mitigation unit to damage even like Going from 18 to 19 damage is like what? Like a 5.5% increase in damage? whoop de doo when you can just mitigate that with armor. And also think about this. If you're up against bees, eventually it gets to a point where you have a ton of armor. The wolf snake isn't doing anything. If they get attack upgrades to make their wolf snake catch up to your armor upgrades and to do, they just do the flatly the same damage they used to do against workers, but now their werewolves aren't very tanky. Okay, now their dragons aren't very tanky. Your archers are having a field day against dragons. They absolutely love running into that stuff, especially since you're going to be making ballista anyways. Okay, well, what if they get armor instead and their werewolves are super tanky? This is a common refrain I've heard from people. Well, we get armor, we get attack, because if we don't get attack, then they're going to get armor. Let's dispel one notion right quick before I continue on to this point. The only reason people who are playing racks by default get attack is that they are again incorporating builds and incorporating strategies that were invented by players in the era before Stakes and before Raiders and before Mech was actually a playable race. That's why. Because if you're up against Mass Wolf, you need all of your soldiers and archers to actually be able to kill the wolves, and it's beneficial. We can theorycraft as to why. Because if the wolves have to surround in their melee units, then they have to come up into the soldiers. They attack at the same speed, and so if my units are attacking at the same speed as their units, then the plus one for both of us is better for both. And they needed the armor because archers have range, and range is a hell of a drug for these wolves to run into back in the era where they had to be all-purpose tanky units and DPS. That's not reality anymore. These players are going for a plus attack. You can get plus armor. It's, in fact, better for you to get plus armor as rats. Here's the refrain that I commonly hear, though. Well, what happens if I run into dragons? As if you don't already make an advanced workshop. As if you don't already make an advanced workshop. Speaking of which, what happened to drops as rats? But we'll get into that in a second. Also, what about werewolves? Oh, you know, the things that start with four base armor and 440 hit points. First off, werewolves, even after all that, are still afraid of running into a giant pile of soldiers. And look at the raider. It does 51 damage against a werewolf. 51! The werewolf having 440 hit points means it actually maximally absorbs the damage. Think about it this way. If there's a wolf with one hit point left, and you have a raider, and it's in a big RBV army fight, you don't want that raider killing that wolf. It's just lost 50 potential hit points worth of damage to the whole army because it went here and killed a wolf that has one hit point left. Whereas if you run into a werewolf, hey, man, I would love to do 50 damage over to this unit. So why don't you do it? The, wolf is a, the werewolf is a giant unit. It has big surface area. Its size, I believe, is over 0.95. It has so much physical space that it contains, and you could just teleport on top of that and kill it. And if you're really afraid and you're like, oh, I don't want to do that because that's something that's like micro-intensive and I don't want to have to deal with that, you know what? Your excuses still don't matter because what about catapults? You know, that unit that's so busted that people are calling for a, a nerf to it that does 58 raw AoE damage? Let's think about this. This is another aspect Rax players don't want to talk about. Remember what I said about upgrades, how Rax players don't get the right upgrades. Still, we're still in 2021. People think that they need to be getting attack upgrades against beasts because they're so terrified of fighting up against werewolves and dragons. Even though I've already said you're not going to be using your Rax units to fight the dragons. That's what the ballista are for in the first place. So if this is the real point you're concerned about are werewolves, let's think about this raw damage uh, values, shall we? 58 damage for a catapult means that there is no world in which it doesn't two-shot a snake, and it will always three-shot a wolf. You don't even have to give it attack upgrades for it to be relevant against wolf and snake. Do you know what happens if you have a normal Rax army that has three catapults in it? Bam, 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 bam. Three shots go off, and all of a sudden, there's like a bunch of snakes at below half health. So far below half health, in fact, that they're not going to regenerate in time to get to stave off the next rock that's going to fall on them. All these wolves that are in the front line now have to get back in order to not get hit by the catapults to go forward. By the way, because Rax is a defensive unit, a uh, defensive race, look at the, all the, the archers that we've gotten, all of the range. Archers would love to watch wolves dance in front of soldiers. 
to dodge catapult shots. That's free damage at range. Why wouldn't you do that? That's a phenomenal trade for Rax versus Beast. And against Mech, again, archers with so much range, the catapults in small numbers have to kill the archers because the archers are the things that can kill the workers. And the, once the workers are down, the Mech army doesn't want to deal with the drops, deal with the massive number of units. So why are we not incorporating uh, catapults into Rax versus Beast? People used to. A lot of people don't know this. They they have a hard-on for using these plus attack upgrades, but they don't seem to remember that once upon a time, that was the build order, was to get catapults against werewolves. Back when werewolves were way more powerful than they are now, by the way. When they had like a ton of armor in an era where if there were sufficient upgrades, you could have archers doing literally one or two damage a shot to them. That's how powerful these werewolves were. And so people were forced to make catapults, and that's what the meta revolved around. That's what people did. And now people still aren't incorporating that, even though by all accounts, the armor of the werewolf has been nerfed relative to archers. And archers, if anything, have been made better against beasts because they do just more raw damage against units relative to the beast regeneration rate. So people don't incorporate that at all. Let's talk about this as well. You know, people have a, a problem with racks against mech. Again, this fear of hybridization has just infested the minds of people who play Rax. I think it's because they always started with so many units that they can build, and they just kept getting rewarded by having more and more and more and more and more and more units added inside of the barracks. So they went from two to three to four units, and then all of a sudden everything is now coalesced around them, so that they only have to go to one place and barely one tech tree in order to solve all of their problems. And now that they can't do that, they don't know where to go. But what about Gatling guns? Have you considered that? Have you considered that? You do realize that this game doesn't have hard races, right? You can pick units from other factions. And if we're talking about the workshop and catapults, and that works against beasts. You know what else works against mech? Have you ever seen a mech unit get slowed to 10% of its movement speed? If you're so afraid that you can't take map control, and you're worried about these pushes in the center of the map, you do realize that you can make the mech player's own Gatling guns, right? You can get these units that are, by your own admission, faster archers that can't shoot up, granted, Faster archers that can't shoot up, that do have range, and they have a map control unit built inside of them that you can play all the time. All the time. You can take advantage of being faster than the opponent by using this. Why don't you do that? Why don't you use gyrocrafts? You know gyrocrafts? You know those things that, like, since you're already building an advanced workshop, hey, why not go ahead and build a mill? You know? What? Why not? Why not? Why can't you have, as uh, racks, why can't you have soldier gyrocraft? You know, gyrocraft is good enough that with good splitting, with good micro, with good mechanics, which you pretty much have to have because you're already playing with raiders uh, as long as you actually attack and do things with the raiders instead of pretending that you can have to somehow, like, hide behind your fear as to what's going to happen to you. What about gyrocrafts? These things that are faster than dragons. These things that can, in fact, be repaired by your own workers, by the way. Uh, what? Why Why not use them? Why not use them? And it's not, oh, well, why not play mech? It's Rax is uniquely suited to have hybridization. The Forge upgrades both! The Forge upgrades both! If you're playing against mech as Rax... Well, why not? They already. Why don't you put pressure on the ballista? Here's a concept that you could take for you in all factions, in all matchups, in all areas of little war game. The idea of unit stress and win or loss conditions. So I'll put it this way: Imagine that there is a soldier archer army against a catapult gyrocraft army. We would say there's a lot of stress being put on the archers in that army. Because the soldiers are supposed to clean up the catapults in theory, but the archers have to help them do it. And they have to, the archers must take care of the gyrocraft. If, they, if all the archers are gone, the other army wins. Period. End of story. End of discussion. So the having archers, uh, not enough archers, is a loss condition. You can take this advantage into you when you hybridize racks with mech. If you have gyrocrafts, do you think any beast player wants to deal with a soldier? Uh, they they want to deal with soldier archer gyrocraft. This snake has so much pressure put on it right then that it's crazy. It's got to be the DPS unit because the wolves can't handle it by themselves to help take out the soldiers. But then there also have to be enough of them to handle the gyrocrafts. But then they also have to be tanky enough as a combination frontline DPS backline to withstand all the archers shooting into them as volleys. Why aren't you using this? 
Here's another thing that Rax players don't use specifically against bees, because that's where I hear the most complaints, especially as we're seeing a strong rise of people who are like intermediate players who are ascending up the ranks of little war games, like internal hierarchy of skill by playing bees. You know workers can build buildings, right? You know, if Rhinus can use workers to body block a mech army in a tournament game, why aren't you doing that? There are replays of me playing against Prankster Gangster. Yes, the same Prankster Gangster who is the third place finisher of the February Cup, a person who's massively more skilled than I am. And we played games, and there are replays. You can check the replays in the Discord. And I'm 5,000 gold down, a base down, and I still managed to win a preposterous number of fights because all I do is I bring some workers with my army and I get extremely efficient trades just by body blocking with forges and workshops. You can do that. You don't have to complete the building. Just bring a couple of workers, not for the repair of the catapults, but just body block, reduce the surface area. If you're so worried about the surface area of people engaging into you and you don't want to incorporate catapults, you don't want to have Gatling guns, you don't want to use mech units, you don't want to go for anything crazy like fast you know, fast mech play or fast mage play or anything like that. If for some reason you're so dead set on doing all of those things, why, why don't you just bring a couple of workers? You know, these units that are already getting Rax upgrades, that are already pretty tanky, already if you're getting plus armor, something of a nightmare for the beast player to deal with because you've just brought extra units that they can't counter pull for. Why don't you use them to build forges and workshops and body block off? You don't have to make a complete wall. Just make little one-by-one -one walls. Make pathfinding work for you. That's something that Rax players don't understand. You can reduce the surface area of the armies that are fighting against you. You can, in the case of being against mech, be greedy. They're afraid of you. They're afraid. They have to respect the all-in potential that you provide. If you want, because Rax is fundamentally a very, very defensively solid race, you don't need as many units in order to defend. Here's another area, speaking of Sin City. Why is it that some of the best Sin City that I've seen in little war game pickup games, outside of things where I deliberately try to use this on my own, some of the best Sin City that I've seen in little war game has been Doomster from the Mentor Tournament. Shame on everyone who is playing Rax, who is getting outdone by, to, to his credit, credit to Doomster and to his mentor, um, Seth Sedananda, for doing this. But why are those the people who are holding up the standard flag for Rax to actually sim city properly? If you have great mechanical skill, it only takes you looking at the map, figuring out what matchup it is, and then how you would want to wall. You can reduce the surface area. You can make it a nightmare for other players to attack into you, both in the Rax v. Rax mirror that's sadly diminishing and less and less common, but especially in Rax vs. Beast, snakes have range 3. They're outranged by archers. You put a house and a tower behind it, they can't hit the tower. How have you not realized that? How have you not realized how you can wall, use the advantage of the hit points of the buildings themselves? Buildings have armor. Snakes hate fighting into armor. They have so they have hundreds of hit points, these buildings. Hundreds of hit points, and you have failed entirely to understand that you can take advantage of that. You don't even have to. When you're complaining about, I have to sit back and defend, you're not even optimizing to sit back and defend. If you think the strength is the immobility of Rax and its ability to hold things with disproportionate ability, why are you not walling off as if that were fact? Why are you not using archer range behind these towers and these buildings and pre-positioning your archers so that Wolf Snake can't easily or favorably trade into that army? That they have to send a ridiculous amount of supply to take it over and put themselves in a very bad state of map positioning. Why are you not taking advantage of all of these things? And so this is the Rax Revival. This is the way that you can think. Stop being afraid. Go greed for once in your life. Practice your Raider Micro. A lot of people don't even know how many Raider shots it takes to one-shot a worker, to one-shot a wolf, what interactions they want to have for those. They couldn't tell you, not, not a tiny bit. They still make buildings somewhere in their main as if they those houses in their main are actually doing them any good or as if they couldn't, in fact, use them to wall off third bases, secure pre-secure naturals, pre-secure fourth bases, 
make life miserable, bring a couple extra workers. They still don't overmake workers. They still don't get the right upgrades. These are all things that you could do to solve and elevate the level of rack play. How do you do it specifically? I don't have a build order for you. But if you haven't considered all of these things, then you can stop saying that Rax is doomed and Rax needs something new. Because what it needs is a revival, but not of new units. It needs a revival of thought. If you enjoy the content that I make on this channel, or for the Little Wargame RTS channel on Twitch, or throughout any other space that involves Little Wargame, please consider subscribing to the Patreon link in the description box below.